Hello everyone. So, uh, we just finished setting up our physics conditions and we just finished making it our, and we're trying to get ready to do the more refined volume mesh. So we're going to set up our boundaries now that the physics have been set up and we have a mesh done and all that. So let's get to it. So we made a region. The region corresponds to the part. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to boundaries. We have a default boundary. It's literally the entire part. So we need to go and make new ones. So if we had, so what we gotta do is we have to define each of the boundaries that are unique that we need to specify some condition on, hence a boundary condition. So we have an inlet, we have an outlet, we have a symmetry plane, we have a ground, we have the side and top, which are gonna be another symmetry. And if this was a full car body, we would have wheels as well. But we don't have that, so I'll make another video to specify rotational boundaries. So let's go and make some new ones. So we said we needed five. So we'll make five. Go ahead and rename them. And so once we're done renaming them, we'll go and start uh, specifying them. So they all start off as walls initially. Um, and a wall is, as the name implies, it's a wall. It's going to be just a wall that's going to be a physical part. So, in the case for the inlet, for example, we have part surfaces. I'm going to switch to geometry because it's a little easier to see this stuff. Part surfaces, you have to select the part surface. That's why splitting the part surfaces is very important to do. You need to split them up properly. So we have an inlet. So now you can see this region is going, this boundary is specifically on this surface, the inlet. And you have these types to choose from here to change them. So we have velocity inlet, uh, mass flow inlet, or stagnation inlet. I don't know what stagnation inlet is. Mass flow inlet, I'm assuming, is you specify a mass flow rate in t into the uh, um, your domain, which I'm assuming would be useful for things where you have like multi-phase flows or things like that. But we're going to use velocity inlet because that's what we're specifying velocity into our domain. As you can see, this gets colored red. It shows up red on all of our scenes. Well, for some reason, that's not showing up on volume mesh, but it'll probably show up when we remesh it. But yeah. So now we have specified the inlet as the velocity inlet, and you see the icon here changes too. So um, under physics conditions, now they have physics set up, you have to specify all the conditions. So flow direction, boundary normal is fine. That means it's going to be normal to the boundary, or if you're not as trusting uh, like I am, you can say components. Reference frame, lab frame is fine, turbulence, that's fine. Velocity, that's also fine. Flow direction, so this is where you can define the f direction of the flow. So if we just left this as boundary normal, then all we need to do is say the magnitude. Um, but like I said, I'm paranoid and I don't trust it, so I always specify flow direction. So I'm going to specify the flow direction as being in the negative Z direction. And because I specified it as the negative Z direction, this is going to be a positive value. So again, 35 mile an hour uh, air going in. Uh, going that way in the negative Z direction. Don't worry about these things. I don't change them. Again, if you get more advanced though, you should. But that takes care of the inlet. So now we gotta go to the outlet. So again, we're going to specify it. And then we are going to specify what it is. So we have an outlet and a pressure outlet. I don't entirely know what the regular outlet is, but we specify a pressure outlet. And again, that changes color to orange. And by specifying as a pressure outlet, we're saying, telling to our CCM this is where pressure gets relieved from. So, again, the icon changes, and we gotta specify pressure, uh, physics conditions. Honestly, I don't change anything in here, so you don't really need to change any of this stuff. So, we're good there. And then we gotta define our symmetry plane. So, we have our first symmetry. Honestly, I could make them all one, but I like just doing this to, uh, to make them distinguishable. So, we have our first symmetry plane, which right now it's a wall. So then what we do is we select symmetry plane, which is the only option, and now it's blue. And then we go ahead and say outside sim, and we specify the top and the side. We make those symmetry planes as well, and now it's all symmetry plane. So this side is critical. It's critical you make this symmetry plane because what this is saying that everything on the, this on one side of the plane is mirrored on the other. So that's why we can get away with only doing a half body simulation because by making this symmetry, we're basically saying, oh, the other half is over here. Whatever happens on this side flows over. It's symmetrical on the other side. Now the top and the sides. I'm not entirely 
I'm not 100 percent sure why this is done. This is just how um, like a video from Simmons set it up and how the previous team lead did it. And I believe it has something to do with making sure that the flow is um, basically shear free. So it's mirroring flow down here. So it's saying there's more flow up there and more flow on the side. So there's flow beyond the domain. So these don't act as walls where vis where drag starts developing through viscosity and like they're solid walls that may affect the the free stream here. But either way, the domain's so big. I don't think it would make too much of a difference, but Anyways, you might as well just do that to be safe. And then, so now we got the ground plane. So this is where you can specify physics conditions on boundaries. In this case, because the ground is, in this case, the air is moving, the car is stationary, the ground also needs to move to mimic the car moving properly. So what we gotta do is we have to specify, um, well, no, sorry, this is, this is all fine. Uh, what we need to do is specify a wall, um, ah, sorry, tangential velocity specification. So, sorry, it's been a while. So, fixed means the wall doesn't move at all. This is where you choose make it a moving wall. So you can do a vector, which will mean it moves, a rotation, and or a rotation rate, and that's what you use for a wheel. But we don't have a wheel, so I can't show you that right now. So we're going to choose vector, and that means our physics conditions we now have relative velocity. So now we're saying just how how is this wall moving? So in this case, we're going to say that it's moving like the free stream air, uh, 35 miles an hour in the negative z direction. And now we have a moving wall. And so now all of our boundaries are set up. We can go back and make the more detailed mesh. I'll go over that in the next video. So yeah, thank you for watching.